quite often they are two easy solutions to problems that allow us to avoid looking at the systemic issues. About a decade ago, I was chatting with my agent about uh, 9-11 and the theories that 9-11 is an inside job. It was an inside job. My agent's great. He's politically great. He's great. And he said that his take on the conspiracy theories is that he pretty much ignored them because he said we don't need the United States government blowing up those buildings in order to know that the United States government will kill American citizens. So he thought that was off the point in that no matter whether it's true or not, the U.S. government has killed and continues to kill American citizens. I thought that was a great point. And it brings up a problem I have with conspiracy theories in general. And before I continue, I have to say that yes, conspiracies do exist. And there were plotters in Nazi Germany who were conspiring to kill Hitler. That is true. And there are groups of people who will conspire to um, destroy a river or to um, pollute a landscape. The thing is those conspiracists are generally not called conspiracists. Those conspiracists are called board members of a mining corporation or board members of a timber corporation. Anyway, conspiracies do exist, um, including illegal conspiracies, including um, you know, groups of senators who will get together to try to sneak through some bill. That's just politics. But a problem I have with conspiracy theory in general is that, or conspiracy theories in general, is that quite often they are two easy solutions to problems that allow us to avoid looking at the systemic issues. So what I mean, or an example, is that in the 19th century, corporations, there were court cases that have been validated many times since then that showed that, or that declared corporations to be people. And that's a cause of significant harm. Um, it, the first case was a railroad case in which I believe the judge actually owned stock in the railroad corporation. So we can say, oh my gosh, conspiracy, conspiracy. That's why, that's why corporations are, are perceived to be people under the laws. But the problem is much deeper than that. The, the problem with the conspiracy idea is that it, it puts the uh, problem on some small cabal of judges who are conspiring to make this happen, as opposed to larger cultural and historic forces that uh, value an economic system over a living planet. And that, so I would argue that corporations are given these legal protections not because of one corrupt judge followed by a series of other corrupt judges, but instead because you have an entire culture that values the economic system over life on the planet and over communities. And also it was dealing with the fact that the projects of corporations were so large that, that no, this is why they came up with a limited liability corporation in the first place, is not because they were conspiring on how can we destroy a river, but instead because they recognized that the economic projects were so large that individuals couldn't be held liable for them because 
the damage caused by them is too large for an individual to make up for. So it's like my friend George Draffin often says, you don't need a conspiracy when everybody thinks the same. So when you have people in capitalism trying to figure out how they can make money, how they can, capitalism itself is based on privatizing profits and externalizing costs. And so of course, capitalism is going to come up with legal fictions that allow them to, that to facilitate privatizing profits and externalizing costs. It's like if you have a, if you have a culture that's based on war, it doesn't take a conspiracy to come up with the B-1 bomber or the hydrogen bomb. Instead, it's a natural, that's not natural, it's a, an inevitable result of the mindset. So another way to think about this is that, yes, in music, in popular music, there have been conspiracies where, I mean, the whole payola thing where the recording companies would pay DJs to play certain songs. So they are certainly conspiring to make certain people popular. Yes, that's true. Or I just learned this about the song Bohemian Rhapsody, that it was given to a, a demo or a, a version of it was given to um, someone in the UK who is, who was a very popular DJ or programmer and he um, loved the song, and before it was even released, he was playing it like 12 times a day. And so yes, you could say there was a conspiracy between Freddie Mercury and the members of Queen and this DJ to get their thing produced, or you could just say that's how business works. And then the real point is that unless the culture was prepped for that song, the song still would not have become popular. There was a cultural, one of the ways I've always said this is no matter how talented we think Jimi Hendrix was, had he been playing the same music in 1915, the culture wasn't ready for it. So you have to have, you can have a conspiracy for Paola, but it doesn't matter if, it doesn't fit with what the culture wants. And so I think that so many conspiracy theories, they let the culture off way too easily because when you have a culture that's based on trying, yes, there was probably a focus group in the Pentagon who came up with the phrase of what the United States wants militarily, which is full spectrum dominance or full spectrum domination. And the focus group probably actually spent time figuring out whether they should say full spectrum dominance or full spectrum domination. I don't remember which one they came up with. But they're not to blame for it. What's to blame is when you have an entire culture based on full spectrum dominance or full spectrum domination, all they did was articulate what was already there. And so, so often we hear about these conspiracy theories, but they blame a small group of people for what instead are larger so socio-cultural problems.